welcome to 15minuteguitar.com. I'm here today with my friend Ash again. Um, and last time you saw us, we did the Kemper review uh, and video, and we talked a lot about the Kemper. Uh, and in that conversation, Ash mentioned the Oxbox. So, first question, Ash, what is the Oxbox? Well, very, so slightly complicated way of explaining it, so I'm going to try and explain this in the, in the most sort of simple way. Just imagine I'm a dummy, I'm not, I'm not. No, I'm well, we'll, just, this, we'll so. just try and find a way. So, if you compare it to what your Kemper is, right, your Kemper's an entire amplifier, mm -hmm. cabinet, microphone, all of it is yep. in there, okay? What this is, is this is essentially a go-between between your amplifier mm -hmm. and the speaker of your amplifier. It's a very it's, sexy box. It's well. a good-looking box. I think they did really well with the design of it. So what's essentially going on is I'm plugging straight into the amplifier. Mm -hmm. Everything that's coming out of it is 100% my amplifier, and you, you know that from earlier when you were playing it. If you change the reverb or the tremolo or everything, yeah. it changes the sound, right? So all of this is still active. This then goes into the back of this box, and then... We've got two connections coming out of this right now. So one connection is actually going back into the amp because this right. can be used as an attenuator. Okay. For those who don't know what an attenuator is, that's basically something where you can bring the volume of your amp down but turn the actual amplifier up so that the power tubes are working. It starts to distort nicely. So you can get but your it, vintage Marshall sounding really good. Yeah, but it's, it's, at, really loud, but it's at a yeah. sensible level so okay. you're not killing your hearing. That makes sense. So that's one option of it. And then the other option is this is modeling the cabinet so the speaker okay. in here and the microphones that are on that cabinet. Okay. okay. So this, although we've got this coming through, you could just run straight out of the preamp of your amplifier into this. This right. acts as your power amp. This acts as your microphones in your cabinet, and then you record direct. So I've got another question like for that. you. Go on. So if you were using this live, yeah, would you use it how we got it set up now with the cab active, or this yeah. cab active, yeah, or would you switch that off? and use the presets from the app, which we'll talk about a little bit later, but mm -hmm. from this app here, would you, is that how you do it or not? If I was using it live, what I would probably do is I would go, I would use both connections. Right. I would have the sound of this on stage, yep. but at maybe like a sensible volume so that I could hear it for monitoring purposes. So that's purely for my ears. Okay. And then the sound of this would go to the front of house engineer. That would then go out of the speakers at the front of house, and then they've got, the sound, I would model essentially the same cabinet that I've got here. Okay. They'd have a cleaner sound that way, because as we said on the Kemper video, um, if you use microphones, you've got the problems of bleed of other instruments, and things yeah. like that. If you want a really clean guitar signal, I would just go out of this and so go straight back. the output on the Oxbox to like a PA front of house. Exactly, yeah. What is that? Is it a XLR? Is it a... It's just a mono, so it's just a, a, a jack cable. So okay. it's just a jack cable that would go straight into the line-in on your mixer okay. or something like that, and right. then they would have control of it at the front of house. Okay, great. Okay, Okay. so maybe still being a bit of a dummy, um, and for maybe some of the viewers out there as well, can you explain how this fits in the signal with an amp, and maybe a little bit of an explanation of how the amp works? Mm -hmm. um, sure. Know. Yeah, so the easiest way to think of it, the simplest way to think about how your amp operates, think of it as your preamp and power amp, mm -hmm. and your speaker cab, yep. okay? So your preamp and power amp is this section with all the knobs on it and what powers the amplifier. So this is essentially the sound of the amplifier, okay? okay? So your Kemper would be digitally modeling yep. something like this. Okay. This is the real deal, the, the real sound of the amp. Yep. That then is loaded, given a, a, a load, and then that's put into the speaker cab and that's what throws the sound out, okay? okay. So the preamp and power amp in this, go out of a cable, out of the back of the amp, mm -hmm. into the speaker. Okay. Like you would plugging your head into a speaker cap, right? Yep. So what this does is this essentially takes all of this, yep. so the unit, yep. plugs that, like loads it properly so that it doesn't break your amp, because we pro should probably say if you plug the output of an amplifier into your recording software straight in, you will blow it up. Yeah, it's not, um, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> uh, this gives it a proper load, and then what this will do is this will model different cabinets. Okay, so, so that sits somewhere in the chain of preamp. Preamp, power amp, Oxbox. and then this is going to do the speaker. Okay. But what, the, what this also gives you the ability to do is you can plug into the speaker to still have the sound of this on so stage. So you still get a monitor. Yeah, and then the sound of this coming out of this will be okay. whatever you want to. Okay. Um, and you still get, obviously, you still get all your effects on the amp if you want it. Yeah. Because yeah. on this amp, lovely amp you've got here, yeah. you've got tremolo and you've got reverb. Mm -hmm. So you still get that. Yeah, and all of the EQs work exactly the same way. So if I turn the treble knob up on this, it would change so the this, sound of the amp. To me, it's a bit of a hybrid sort yeah. of system. As Essentially, opposed to the camper, yeah. This is sort of like if you love your valve amp, mm -hmm. you still love that sound. 
but you want it to be a bit more practical. So a good way of sending it to the front of house or a good way to send it to your recording equipment. Yeah. Um, and also to use headphones, is that right? Yeah, so, so can... there is a headphone out and it's, it's good. It sounds great. Um, you control what the, uh, what the aux box is, is putting out and then you can obviously change some parameters here um, on the app. But the, reason, the, the sole reason I bought this and the sole reason I went for this mm -hmm. is because I've been spending quite a few years learning different amps, collecting different amps and things like that. And it's the same with guitars and stuff. You could have two, you know, two deluxe reverbs, for example, that were built on the same day, um, same factory or whatever. And most of the time they're pretty similar, but sometimes you just find one that's just a bit magic yeah. and you just go, that's, that's my amplifier, mm -hmm. you know, and I have two or, two or three of amps like that. Okay. So I didn't want to have an emulation of something. Yeah. I wanted the real, the real thing for yeah. recording, you know, or as that close to it as I could get. So the advantage of this is this is just modeling everything else on the back of it, any okay. speaker or whatever, but so it's still my amp. On a live use as well, if you want to use like in-ear monitors like I was using with the Kemper, yeah. could you just plug a headphone into there mm -hmm. and then you would, on stage, you would get your, like your REM so you could have go sure. into your ears, is that right? Yeah, so I don't see why not. Yeah, okay, you, yeah. Could, you could definitely do that. The, uh, good. Maybe, I don't know whether that's something I would necessarily do just simply because it might shut off a bit of the rest of the band and vocals and things yeah, like okay, that, yeah. but it, de it depends on how you want to do it. Like yeah. the way you're running your Kemper, yeah, you probably you yeah, probably okay. could do that. Absolutely, it's this is more for me a, a studio tool mm -hmm. than it is a uh, live is use. a live use thing. Okay. This is um, the benefit of this is I can com I can record my amp completely silently. So yeah, would you say that space. most people using one of these? It's for a studio situation as opposed to a live situation. It doesn't have to be. I would just say that's the way, way that the it. way that I use okay. it, um, and that's the way I find it most beneficial. Uh, but uh, yeah, I don't see why you couldn't. You you totally could, you know. And you could even I've seen some people doing really clever things mm -hmm. using the app, putting all their delays and reverbs on there, fully wet or whatever, and yeah. then having the front of house do that, and then mixing that in with their live amp sound. You know, cool. so you can the options are kind of endless with that. You could totally. Great. Get some cool things out of it. Well, let's take a look at the app then. Okay, so let's have a little look at the app right now because this is what's going to make the uh, make everything a little bit more versatile for us. So right now, as you're plugged into it, all I'm doing is modeling the sound mm -hmm. of this speaker. Okay? okay, so it's exactly the same as the speaker here. Right. It's this amplifier going into a model sound of the speaker that we've got. Okay, so okay. have a little play. Try yep. that out. So that's just the sound of like this amp, cool. okay? But what we can do with this, say you're playing this amplifier and you think, do you know what, that sounds really good, but I'd love to know what it was like through a, through a 212. You can go down to the cabinet here, yeah. okay? And then select that and then we'll go down, we'll find something. So there we go, 212, what have we got here? So there we go. We've got 212 2 verb, okay? So that's like a, a cab for like a 2 rock, okay? Okay, which is a sort of a fendery thing. So let's choose that, okay? Now have a play with that. Okay, so different sound again, right? And what this is also doing is this is modeling the microphone we're picking this up with. So those last two, I just did that with like a 57. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm just gonna go back to the, uh, the cabinet we just had. So that's gonna be here. So we were on 112 black D dash ux. So I'm guessing that's like a deluxe. A deluxe, yeah, right, we've got there. Okay, so going back to this. And then we've got amplifier, uh, amplifiers, we've got microphones being modeled here, okay. okay? So you're just doing using a 57 right now. Okay. But you can have two options of that on the cab. So something so else that's quite common um, for a lot of Nashville studio guys and LA session guys as well, is they'll do a combination of like a 57 and a ribbon mic. Right. So what I'll do now is I've got a ribbon mic set up on this next one. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna just unmute that. So now if you wanna have a play with that, Okay, so that gives you more of a, a three-dimensional sound with two microphones. 
Um, not to say you couldn't just do that. Some of the best guitar sounds in the world were recorded with just an SM57, so there's certainly some options there. So we've got those two. Mm -hmm. The third option we've got here, um, and this is what really makes stuff sound like a record and also something that I would say is really important yep. for that studio sound. We have a room mic option. Okay. okay. So you can quite often what they do in studios is they'll use a pair of room mics in a really nice sounding room yep. to capture that sound of the room. I can't do this at home in my bedroom, even if like even if I had the greatest mics in all of the world, if I set that up in my little studio room, yep. it's not gonna sound like a record because the room's not built for it. No. Okay. But what this is gonna do is this is gonna model the sound of the room okay. and make it sound more live, okay? So now I'm gonna put this in, have a play with that. Okay, so I'm just gonna turn it up. We're gonna do that again. I'm gonna turn it up on here so it's quite prominent. I'm just gonna adjust this while you're playing. So while I'm adjusting the room control, you'll hear how much it changes the sound of it, okay? So it kind of gives the impression of like air or yeah, space, you okay. know, it gives, it gives you a little bit of uh, extra, extra stuff to it. I've got another question for you. Go for it. Are there any effects with the Oxbox? There are. So it gives you four effects in the Oxbox. I wouldn't say they're necessarily in the box themselves, it's more in the app. So think of it like a plugin on your computer. Okay. But the plugins and the Oxbox itself are designed by this company called Universal Audio. So, no, so no effects on the Oxbox itself? Not really, unless you I, unless you dial them in. There might be a way to dial them in with the rig manager, so you can actually save five or six rigs okay. on here and then recall them without using the app. I see. The app. So that may be possible. I haven't tried that. Uh, but in the app itself, we've got four options for sounds that are just great for adding that extra little bit of sparkle. To be honest, something you'd probably do in your recording interface. So this is how the effects are working on here. So I'm, I'm a bit hasty to call them effects because they're not really like effects like your guitar pedals are effects. Right. I would say they're more effects like outboard studio gear and things like that. So you'll often, you know, if you went in a uh, studio, you'd see things like rack compressors okay, or yeah. delays or reverbs and things, things yeah. that go on the sound as a whole. Mm -hmm. um, but they would be things that you would mix into your guitar sound maybe later after you've recorded them. Okay. So let's just have a little bit of, of a look at some of these. So one of the options you've got is just a standard uh, four band EQ. Yeah. Um, and that is very flexible, it's always useful just for getting little odd frequencies out. So yeah. that's really handy. Um, this is really cool. This uh, effect here, this next one, uh, this is a model of an 1176 compressor, which is a very famous studio compressor used on thousands of records. Um, and the Universal Audio models are really something special. They're, ju they're just kind of like a little bit of extra air. Okay. So I haven't really got a setting uh, on here, but we'll just have a little play with that and I'll turn it on and off so you can see okay. what it's sort of doing. So let's. So it's a very subtle thing, but in a track, when you mix that in with a load of stuff, that is a really... So it just helps it sit better in the balance of the track. It's a big noise, yeah. yeah it's it's, it's um, essentially doing the job of like a preamp. Okay. Uh, and then we have got in here some very cool delays and reverbs. So uh, let's have a little look at this delay. So if you want to have a go at playing something, I will just pull this in and out.
lovely. Just really nice, airy delay, really versatile. I can get you all sorts out of it. Um, and is the that last delay modelled on anything at all? Like any sort of? It's it's some sort of studio delay. I would be. I'm not going to try and pretend that I know what it is. Okay. But there's uh, there's definitely it's a it's a decent model. I've I've played with uh, you know some of my presets in Logic and yeah. I've had some aftermarket plugins and this is really great Good. for that stuff. And then uh, last but not least, we've got like a plate reverb, which I think this might be my favourite of all of them. Um, because it's a really great sounding. Shall we turn the reverb off the amp? Uh, I that, mean, you or? can do the the plate re a plate reverb. Sort of a different thing. I would okay. say it's it, like again, it being more of a studio tool, it should blend quite nicely. But we'll we'll certainly try it. So if I turn the reverb back on that, and then we'll just have the plate reverb in there. So have a go. Big sound, um, lovely, just sounds like a proper plate reverb, really. It just, it sounds great. So for your mixing capabilities and things like that, you couple those effects with the fact that you could have this amplifier, your amplifier, through any speaker cab you want, mm -hmm. any microphone combination you want, because there's all sorts of choices. There's not too many choices, which is something I really like about this. I think all in all, there's about 40 microphones or something like that. And... Um, maybe like 20 speaker cabs. So it's right. not like you're not, you know, really confused by too much choice, but you could have this deluxe as, you know, it's a, it, we've got a 112 deluxe. You put that with a 212 cab. Now you're playing with something more like a Fender Twin, right? Okay. Or you put this, for example, you drive this a little bit harder, maybe put this through a 412. Mm -hmm. You might have something similar to like an old Marshall Blues Breaker or something, you know, right. but like different amps, obviously. Yeah, yeah. But that approximation in the speaker cab makes all the difference. So really. we've literally just we've just scratched the surface of what you can do on the app. We've just yeah. gone through three presets and stuff, but there's obviously more you can do. Okay, Ash, so if we just do a quick summary for people watching. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe just a quick, why might you buy the Oxbox? So what's, you know, what's its uses? Uh, and why might you sort of you know, use this over a Kemper. I know it's a slightly different thing, but we did talk last video a lot about the Kemper. Yeah. Um, so maybe like why you would pick this over the Kemper or something, or what's the, you know, the comparison or sure. the difference. Okay. So I would say, think it's all about like what the job is. Okay. Mm -hmm. I would say for live use, something like the Kemper is probably fantastic for that because okay. it means you don't have to bring an amplifier or anything. Mm -hmm. Everything's all there set up for you in that box, right. you know? Um, I'd say for studio use, especially if you're living somewhere where you haven't got the capability or you haven't got all those amplifiers to hand or things mm -hmm. like that, this is excellent because you're still using your amplifier. Everything that's coming out of that is 100% your amp. The only thing you're modeling at the end of it is what mic is picking it up, what speaker cab you've got. And all these things vary so massively. You know, you could say, oh, it might not sound exactly like the speaker. I'd say it's, it's pretty close. You yeah. know, it's, it's not going to sound any different to, say, the same amp with a different, with a slightly older speaker of the same make, you know, because okay. there's so many variables with that kind so, of thing. So are we sort of saying uh, maybe like a Kempus style system or something like a Helix for live use, mm -hmm. and then maybe the Oxbox more for a studio use? or Maybe that's where I'm going with it. I'm yeah. not going to say that's 100% the way that it should be, okay. but in my head, I guess that's where it, really where it. it sort of sets out. Um, Simply because of the versatility of this, like I said, the, the flexibility of just that being able to change all the cabs and mm -hmm. things like that, that's massive. Yeah. You, you're basically treating all of your combo amps as heads. And you do away with the microphone in front of the amp on stage. Yeah, thing. and that's a nightmare too, like placing a microphone, yeah. you've got to get it in just the right spot. This has already been done by like professionals who have done it for years and know exactly where microphones sound the best. Okay. You know, So the model of it is... You know, the best it can be. Uh, so this is sort of appealing to the, the hybrid guys who like still love a, uh, an amplifier, so they still want the amplifier in the rig. They mm -hmm. can't sort of get, they can't completely convert to Kemper. Yeah. They want that valve amplifier. Yeah. But they want it cranked, mm -hmm. using the attenuation of this to keep the volume down. Um, but it sounds, you know, getting a good sound. Yeah. Um, and you've still got, you, you can still send that to the front of house. Um, so it's for those sort of guys maybe sort of not completely so. the other, converted. The other thing to think about as well is price-wise, this is about half of the what price the Kemper is. Yeah. So there's that to consider as well. Okay. Um, but I think it's great. For me, it was the best option. 
um, just simply for home recording, it gives me the best guitar tones I can with the gear that I've got Great. without uh, compromising on anything or modeling anything. Brilliant. So, so I'd say, yeah. Uh, Go out and buy yourself a camper and an Oxbox. <laughs> <laughs> Get Take your credit card with you. You might need it. But no, they're both great systems. So. Yeah, um, it, it all depends. As, as with these things, it all depends on what you need. And beginners, again, we said this in the last video, yeah. beginners maybe wouldn't get the benefit out of this. Just no. play your amp, just just play your guitar and do it that way. Okay. If you're in a studio situation and you need to record and you need that sound yeah. you know, readily available and you don't want to compromise your amps, grab one of these. Great. You know, well, a camper would still do that job too, just in a different way. Brilliant. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. Um, I look forward to seeing you on our next video.